last night on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Derek Lee. He's right for $64,000. Well, Louis Primus right for $125,000. Have you thought about what you would do with a million dollars? The first thing that I would do is uh, buy my wife whatever she wants. We're going for a quarter million right here. Let's play. Here we go. Who was the first to be the covers of Time, Newsweek, and Sports Illustrated in the same week? Let me take the 50-50 lifeline. Oh. Well, you were going to dismiss Secretariat, but back. I am going to walk away and keep the 125000 I would have chosen Ali. Thank God you've walked away. It's Secretariat. Now, join us from New York for night 62 of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Tuesday Night at Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Last night, we had two hot seat contestants who had gone to the very same high school, hadn't seen each other in 15 years. Now, what are the odds of that happening? I wonder if our returning contestant, Rich Matthews from San Francisco, California, will know anybody on today's show. What do you think, Rich? Uh, I don't know. We'll Nobody see. looks familiar no, so far. Nobody huh? looks familiar. Yeah. But at least uh, your uh, sister and uh, your sister Debbie and uh, your mother, uh, Jane, are here, and it's nice to have them both here. Your mom is hearing impaired. Correct. And uh, your sister is a sign interpreter, huh? That is Interesting. correct. Interesting. Good. Why don't you tell Rich's mother, Regis loves her? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, the only time I've ever heard a thank you from a woman. Good. <laughs> or anybody, for that matter. <laughs> All right, Rich, it's nice to have you. Tell me a little bit about yourself. We didn't have a chance to talk last night, but you're from San Francisco. That's right. What do you do? I'm a lawyer and a negotiation consultant. We uh, consult worldwide, typically with Fortune 100 companies, and uh, help them negotiate, re reach better agreements, really. The art of negotiation. Exactly right. All right, you already have uh, $200. Uh, you're 13 questions away from winning the million. Really, we're just getting started with you. But as you know, the rules are simple. The more questions you get right, the more money you win. When you reach the $1,000 or the $32,000 level, you're guaranteed to leave you with at least that much money. You have all three lifelines left to help, 50-50, where the computer will take away two of the wrong answers, leaving the correct answer and one wrong answer. You can ask the audience, where you can call our studio audience to see what they think the answer is. Finally, you can phone a friend, where our friends at AT&T will help you call anyone anywhere in America to see if they can help you out. So, Rich, if you're ready... And I am. All right, audience, are you ready? Yes, we're ready. Let's go. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Here it is now for $300. What is the name of the butler on the TV series The Addams Family? Stumble, Lurch, Trip, Limp. Uh, that would be B, Lurch. It's the right one. You won $300. $500, here it is. In what animal's shell would you most likely find a pearl? A snail, a lobster, a turtle, oyster. That would be D, oyster. Sure, it's the oyster. You're right, for $500. $1,000, here it is. How is the number 2,000 expressed in Roman numerals? MC, MD, M M L L C M M. Right, one thousand dollars. Good. Hey, you're up to a thousand dollars. Ten away from a million. All three lifelines uh, are with you. Here we go for two thousand dollars. Which of the following was a member of the Harlem Globetrotters? Magic Johnson. Meadowlark Lemon. Shaquille O'Neal, Dr. J. And that would be B, Meadowlark Lemon. And that would be your final answer? Yes. And that would be the right one for $2,000. <laughs> Feeling very smooth and confident, aren't you, Rich? I can well, just we'll tell. see. So I mean, far, anyway. So far, that's right. Here it is for $4,000. In the film Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, what is the title character searching for? Ankara Stone, 
Ark of the Covenant, Holy Grail, Excalibur. I think I'd like to ask the audience. Okay, we can poll the audience. Sure, Rich needs your help, audience. On your keypads using A, B, C, or D, please vote now. Fifty percent feel it's the Holy Grail. Ark of Covenant came in second, and uh, Ankara Stone was third. Right. Um, well, the first movie was uh, the Ark of the Covenant. So it ain't that. Um, though that's a pretty convincing percentage. Try to negotiate your way out of this. <laughs> Use everything you've learned, Rich. That's right. Get Use. to the bottom of why these people put this question That's together right. like this. That's right. We almost had the first spit take in the history of this show. Huh? Uh, well, Crusade would... Uh, Boy, but you know, for some reason, I really thought it was the Ankara Stone. You know, I, I uh, boy, do I hate to do this. Well, really you could narrow it do down this. by two. You could phone somebody. I think I'm going to use the 50-50, and I hate doing it. All right, fine. That's what they're here for, okay? Exactly. Computer, take away two of the wrong answers, leaving Rich one wrong answer and the correct one. This and is I like predicted. Want to, want to put in a call to Spielberg? <laughs> <laughs> we'll do anything you want, Rich. Oh, I appreciate anything. that. Anything. I appreciate that. Um, let's say C, Holy Grail. I don't mean to rush you. I'm uh, honest to God. I understand. I uh, want to make that your final answer? See if this looks like a movie-going bunch. Ah, uh, yes, final answer. Rich, you won. Thank you all. Thank you. Okay, he burns up two lifelines. He's ain't away from the million, going for 8,000. When do we come back? from San Francisco in the hot seat right now. Rich Matthews, uh, you're single? I am. Uh-huh. And uh, live alone? I do. Well, I have two cats. Do you? Uh, feline Americans. Uh-huh. Uh, yes. Good for you. Yeah. And uh, any names? Well, yes. Mr. Fabulous, because he is. And, uh, and Mr. Smooth, because he's kind of a little clumsy. Uh, although Mr. Smooth watches the show intently. Be amazing if he's watching you right now. I know. That'd be great. Actually, he's looking you know. at you saying, there's Daddy. Mr. Smooth. <laughs> Mr. Smooth, I'm here with Uncle Regis. <laughs> Very sharp. All right, Rich, here's the story. You burned up two lifelines on that question. You know hey. that. You've got one left. You can phone a friend. You're going for 8,000. You're eight away from a million. It's doable. Let's try for it, okay? Let's play. Here we go. In terms of total area, what is the smallest state in the United States? Rhode Island, Delaware, West Virginia, Connecticut. All right. A, Rhode Island. Sure? Sure enough. Final answer? Yes. You got it. It's Rhode Island. Okay, just seven more for the million dollars. We're going for 16,000. Here it is. What TV series began as a Christmas special titled The Homecoming? Family? Little House on the Prairie? The Waltons? Seventh Heaven? That would be C, The Waltons. Final answer? Yes. Just won 16,000. <laughs> 
six away from a million. I'm going to give you a countdown here. <laughs> here it comes for $32,000. What genetically engineered mammal was the first to be patented in the United States? A mouse, sheep, guinea pig, cat. I'd like to call Mr. Smooth. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't do real well at this game, uh, surprisingly. Mr. Fabulous, on the other hand. Um, I really am thinking about that photograph with the mouse that is uh, growing a human ear on his back. Um, I know that happened in the United States. I know the cloning of Dolly the sheep happened in Scotland. Um, cat, I think, is still more advanced of a mammal than has been toyed with yet uh, genetically. And yet, guinea pig is a cliche in our language because that's the one that laboratory researchers always work with. I can't get off that photograph with the mouth with the human ear on the back. I'm going to say A, mouse. Final answer. Yes. You just won $32,000. There it is, the mouse with the ear on its back. Well, you pull that out of the air, see? Thank and you. you still have that lifeline, and now we're five away from one million. We're going for $64,000. Take a look at it. Who was the only eligible incumbent U.S. president not to get his party renomination re for a second term? Jimmy Carter, Grover Cleveland, Zachary Taylor, Franklin Pierce. to negotiate with you. <laughs> well, uh, who, uh, who do you feel shouldn't be on? Well, for sure, Jimmy Carter, because Jimmy Carter was renominated in 80, beating Ted Kennedy. Um, for some reason, I'm leaning toward Cleveland. Uh, do you know that uh, the only president named for a Muppet is Grover Cleveland? So we do know that. Um, it's great to know, really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pass it on to Mr. Smooth. Then I, I will do that. That's right. Until we elect someone named Elmo. I hate to do this. I would, uh, I believe I will phone a friend. Okay. Who do you want to call? Uh. <laughs> you take your time. You just take your time. That's right. 
Want to call one of my friends? If one of your friends is the Librarian of Congress or something, yeah. that'd be... Uh, well, Franco Fidelli doesn't have that job, but... Uh, what do you think? I would like to call my friend Greg. What does he do? He's a newspaper editor at the Seattle Times. Are you kidding? This has got to be the guy. Let's hope. AT&T, quickly, get us Greg before he changes his mind. On the line, please. Hello, Greg. Yes. Hi, Regis Philbin here from New York City. Yes, hello. Or at least I used to be when I came in here. I'm here okay. with an old pal of yours, Rich. Yes. And he needs your help. All right. He's won 32,000. He's going for 64,000. When he comes on the line, he'll read you a question and then four answers. All right. One of them's the right answer. Now, listen to me, Rich. You only have 30 seconds. <laughs> and they start right now. Who was the only eligible incumbent U.S. president not to get his party's re-nomination for a second term? Grover Cleveland, Zachary Taylor, or Franklin Pierce? I believe it was Grover Cleveland. Yeah, so do I. Why do you think so, Greg? Uh, I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure. He uh, he had he had split. Right. Uh, right. He had split terms, so right. that's why I think it's him. Okay. Okay, we phoned a friend. We came up with the same answer you thought it was in your gut to begin with. Right. So now, Rich Matthews, now, without a, without a lifeline left, what do you think? I will choose B, Grover Cleveland. Is that your final answer? Let's make this my final answer. I'll be darned, it was Franklin Pierce. Well, let me tell you something. You're a great contestant, you're a great guy, and a lot of fun. And here it is, my man, Thank for 32 Thanks, Regis. I'm sorry, but it was a good time. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. What a great contestant. All right, here it is. Uh, Grover Cleveland was re-nominated by his party for a second term as an incumbent, but lost the election. And Franklin Pierce was denied the re-nomination at the convention in 1856. Instead, the nomination went to who? Yes, James Buchanan. But right now, we've got 10 new contestants ready to go. Who are they tonight? Let's find out. They are Matt Mullins, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Ed Novak, Oak Creek, Wisconsin. Jim Sider, Lasdale, New York. Betsy Keller, Ewing, New Jersey. Peter Trebley, New York City. Craig Colworth, New Iberia, Louisiana. Rich White, Eau Claire, Wisconsin. John Wickham, Greer, South Carolina. Zaki Zak, Rochester, New York. Rob Long, Troy, Michigan. Okay, contestants, congratulations on getting this far. Now, here's how it works. In a moment, a question and four answers will appear on your screens. The one who puts these answers in the correct order in the fastest time will be our next player. Audience, we need complete silence here. Thank you very much. Here's the question. Put these candy bars in the order they were introduced to the public, starting with the most recent. Snickers, Hershey bar, whatchamacallit, nutrageous. Everybody, time's up. Let's see the answer in the correct order, starting with the most recent. And it was nutrageous. Then came whatchamacallit, then Snickers, and then Hershey bar. All right, let's see who got it right. And in the fastest time, and the winner is Rob Walsh. He wants to play. He's going for a million dollars. So we have uh, Rob Long, 25 years old from uh, Troy, Michigan. That's right outside of uh, Detroit, isn't it? Yeah, about an hour's drive. Uh huh. Nice to have you here, Rob. You're an insurance actuary? Yes. 
And your mom is sitting in the audience. Uh, Mary Ann, how you doing, Mary Ann? Just fine. You nervous for your son? Of course. <laughs> yeah, sure. Of course you are. <laughs> well, you know, this guy has been in training all of his life for this very moment, haven't you? Yes, When I you have. were four years old, I mean, you didn't play with toys. You played with cards and calculators. Calculators. I used to make up my own game shows mm -hmm. and pretend I was the host. And you... And <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's good to be the host. Sometimes. Sometimes it's a long job. Yes. All right, you all set it, all ready to go here? Yes. All right, you know about the rules, you know about the lifelines, 50-50, ask the audience, vote a friend, all there for you. So if you're ready, Rob, let's play. Let's play who wants to be a millionaire. <laughs> $100. Which of the following is not a popular type of dance? Twist. Polka. Macarena. Roto-Rooter. Well, I hope the answer is D. Roto-Rooter. Good for you. You're right. $100. You want it. $200. And here it comes. On what surface, what sort of surface do Olympic bobsledders compete? Ice. Plastic. Stone. Bob. Um, the answer is A. Ice. You got it. It's ice. You won $200. $300. Here it is. The 1996 movie Twister focused on people who are obsessed with which of the following? Board games, yoga, tornadoes, Charles Dickens. It's C, tornadoes. Sure, you're right. It's tornadoes. You won $300. Take a look at this one now for $500. What does mi casa es su casa mean? In wine, there's truth. My house is your house. What will be, will be. Go with God. It's my house is your house, B. Yes, indeed, it is your house, and you won $500. For $1,000, Rob, which of the following animals is known to often rely on echolocation to navigate? Bat, bison, pelican, tortoise. The answer is A, bat. It's a bat. You won a thousand dollars. All right, he's doing fine. Goal of his lifeline. Ten away from the million. Going for two thousand. We'll be back. Here from uh, Troy, Michigan, went to the University of Michigan and was on the, uh, what was it, the college quiz bowl team? Yeah, the quiz bowl team. How'd you guys Michigan. do? Um, we did all right. Uh, right now, I, I believe they won the regionals last mm -hmm. week. Mm -hmm. And when you were on? Um, team? We lost the regionals. <laughs> Not a good sign. No. Not a good sign, Rob. But you're doing fine so far. All your lifelines still with you. Ten questions away from the million, going for 2,000. Let's play. Here we go. <laughs> Here it is now for $2,000. Who sits at a typewriter overlooking Charles Schultz's farewell message in the final Peanuts strip? Charlie Brown, Snoopy, Lucy, Linus. Well, I remember seeing this, this comic strip, and I believe it was Snoopy, and he always has Snoopy as being the writer, writer type, always writing the novel. So I'm going to say B, Snoopy. Snoopy, final answer? Yes. You're right for $2,000. Yeah. Charles Schultz, great man and a great cartoonist. Yes. All right, nine away from a million. $4,000. Here it is. What U.S. state is nicknamed the Gopher State? Wisconsin, North Dakota, Michigan, Minnesota. Well, it's definitely not Michigan. I can tell you that. Uh, not North Dakota. <clears throat> I believe it's the Wisconsin Badgers, Minnesota Gophers. I'm going to say Minnesota. D. You're going to make that your final answer? Yes. It's a good one. You won $4,000. <laughs> And still has all his lifelines. Here it is for $8,000. 
I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings is the title of whose autobiography? Anne Rice, Nelson Mandela, Maya Angelou, Francis Farmer. Maya, it's Maya Angelou. Uh, C, final answer. You said it, you got it right for eight times. Hey, we're seven away from uh, the million dollars here. He's got all three lifelines still there. We're going for 16,000. This is what it looks like. In the HBO series, The Larry Sanders Show, what was sidekick Hank Kingsley's catchphrase? hi -o? Yes, sir. Hey, now. Hey, hey, hey. Well, hey, hey, hey was Fat Albert saying. Um, don't know who said the other two. And I've never seen, seen this TV show, but I believe it's Hey Now. C. Want to go with it? Final answer? C, Hey Now, final answer. Hey Now, you're right to $16,000. That's perfect. Going for 32000 right now, six away from a million, and you haven't used one lifeline. Not yet. No? Doing very well. All right, here we go for $32,000. After the U.S. Constitution was ratified, where was the first federal capital? New York City, Philadelphia, Washington, D.C., Austin. <clears throat> well... Let's give it a shot. I would like to, to use the 50-50. No problem. Computer, please take away two of the wrong answers for uh, leaving one wrong answer and the correct one. Oh, those were the two. Well, it's a big step, 32,000. Nice little mark to, to get to. So... I'm going to use my phone a friend. Who do you want to call? I'll phone Chris. Who's Chris? Chris is someone I play trivia with. He's a, he's a student at MSU. All right, fine. We'll get AT&T. AT we'll get Tris, uh, Chris on the line. Yes. See if he can help. Hello? Hello, Chris. Hello, Regent. Regent. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. We're calling you from the set of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Okay. I'm here with Rob, and he needs your help. I know you can't see us right now, but he's won 16000 going for 32000 And he uh, is going to read you a question and then two possible answers. One of them is the right answer, okay? Okay. Next voice you hear will be his, and you've got 30 seconds, and they start right now, Rob. Chris, after the U.S. Constitution was ratified, where was the first federal capital, uh, capital located? Is it New York City or Philadelphia? New York City. Are you sure on that? Yes. George Washington was inaugurated sure? in New York City. And, and then Philadelphia followed after New York City, yes, right? Yes, I believe I'm about 75 to 80 percent sure. So, oh, that's not too sure. Um, but you know your history, so I, I'm going to I'm going to trust you, Chris. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Chris really knows his government and, and his geography. We'll be the judge of that. <laughs> he won the National Geography B one year, so I'm hoping, hoping he knows this. I'm going to say New York City, A, and I hope Chris, Chris is right. Final answer? Final answer. He was right. Yes. He won 32000 for $32,000 for Rob Long. Rob, it's good to have you. I know this is a little bit different than when you're usually playing trivia in a bar or with friends and everything. A lot more pressure, huh? Yes. But you're doing okay. You still have one lifeline left. You can poll the audience. We're going for 64000 You're just five away from the million. It'd be great if you could win a million, right, Rob? Yes, it is. All right, let's play. Let's get back to it. <laughs> For $64,000, here it is. 
What metal is mixed with silver to make sterling silver? Iron, copper, gold, platinum. Ooh. Four choices I was not expecting. You thought it was something else? Yes. I was thinking something like, oh, tin or lead. I want to make sure I, I have a guess, but I'm going to try the audience, and hopefully they know. All right, fine. Audience, Rob needs uh, some help here. On your keypads, using A, B, C, or D, please vote now. Oh, man. Wow, that is kind of a tough one. Ouch. Never had a spread like that before. 33% platinum, 32% iron. 25% copper. Oh, my. And suddenly, I... the lifelines are gone. Bye-bye, lifelines. I'm going to cross my fingers and go for it. I'm going to say D, platinum. D, platinum. Final answer? D, platinum is my final answer. Believe it or not, it was copper. Oh, copper, my. Uh, yeah, it's copper. But look, $32,000. Right there, my man. Okay? Thanks, Bob. Good luck. Ah, uh, yes, sterling silver, 92.5% silver and 7.5% copper. But we still have nine more contestants ready to go, so here's the next fastest finger question. Put the following movies in order of their first theatrical release, starting with the earliest. Free Willy, Jaws, The Abyss, Poseidon Adventure. Hey everybody, time's up. Let's see the answer in the correct order, starting with the earliest film, The Poseidon Adventure, then Jaws, then the abyss, and finally Free Willy. That's it. Let's see who got it right at the fastest time. The winner is Jim Sider. Hey, Jimmy, congratulations. Let's go. All right, Jim. Very, very good. Where are you from? Blaisdell, New York. It's near Buffalo. Aha, good for you. What do you do? I'm an attorney. An attorney. All right, yes. fine. Well, now you know the rules by now, right? You know about the lifelines. So if you're ready, why don't we get right into it? Okay, Jim, Let's go. here we go. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. $100, Jim. Which of the following words can be used to describe very thin shoulder straps on a dress? Ravioli, tortellini, fettuccine, spaghetti. That would be D, spaghetti. Right, spaghetti is the one. $200, and here it comes. The most difficult trails on a North American ski mountain are usually designated by what sign? Black diamonds, pink hearts, purple moons, green clovers. A, black diamonds. Black diamonds it is for $200. $300. By definition, which of these activities is the most commonly associated with a pedestrian? Sleeping? Walking, singing, yelling. Uh, that would be B, walking. You bet it's walking. A walking pedestrian for $500. What word comes right before the ramparts in the first stanza of the Star Spangled Banner? For, by, through, or. That would be D, or. Good one. You won $500. Now for a thousand. Which of the following is not an animal product? Cotton, leather, fur, suede. There'll be a cotton. Sure, it's cotton for a thousand dollars. Off to the good start here. Moment for the big one. Be back in just a moment. Don't go away. Jim 
Schneider with us right now, an attorney from Blaisdell, uh, New York, just outside of uh, Buffalo. That's right. Sider is a familiar name around here. We've had a couple of Siders on this show before. Yes, you have. My brother Joe was on the show uh, in August, and my sister-in-law, Teresa, was also on. Really? And how did yes. they do? They did not get on the hot seat, but they were uh, among right. the ten. You're the first Sider to be cited here, First on here, the hot huh? seat, yes. Well, that's great, Jim. And your dad is in the audience as well? Yes, he is. Nice to have him here. Hi, Joe. How are you? Fine, Regis. Good. He's retired right now? He yes, is retired. I am. Very proud of your son, I'll bet, huh? Oh, very proud. All right, good. Okay, Jim, here's the story. You, you, all your lifelines are with you. Okay. $1,000. You're going for $2,000. you are 10 away from a million. Let's play. <laughs> here it is now for $2,000. Besides Earth, what are the planets in the solar system named after? Italian astronomers, Greek and Roman gods, Chinese emperors, noble gases. Besides Earth, well, that would be... Uh, actually, my, my sister-in-law had a dream that I was going to miss a question about the solar system, but I'm, I don't think I'm going to miss this one. Um, it's B, Greek and Roman gods. Final answer? That would be my final answer. Absolutely right. The name after Greek and Roman gods. For four thousand dollars, in what type of restaurant would you most expect to find food cooked in a tandoor? Cuban, Indian, Mexican, Vietnamese. There's a restaurant in Buffalo, Tandoori. It's an Indian restaurant, so I'm going to go with the Indian. Final answer? Final answer. It's a good one. You won $4,000. It's Indian. You're right. Here it comes now for $8,000. Which of the following movies did not use the state of Texas as its primary setting? The Sting. The Last Picture Show. Giant. Reality Bites. See any of these? I've seen them all. I'm just trying to think of Reality Bites. I can't really picture where that took place. I'll, I'll pull the audience just to make sure. Sure, we can do that. Audience, Jim needs some help here. On your keypads, using A, B, C, or D, vote now. <laughs> Audience divided again, really. Re Reality Bites got 48% uh, and uh, Sting got uh, 40 All right, let's, uh, I'll try 50-50. 50-50, okay, computer, take away two of the wrong answers, leaving one wrong answer and the correct one. Could see it coming, couldn't you? Yeah. Well, let's see, see reality, reality Bites, I'm thinking, has different locations in it, and it's, and I just don't know if Texas was one of them. All right, I hate to do it, but I'll phone a friend. Uh, Joe, my brother. Joe, your brother. Was he here? Was he the one who was here before? He was here before. All right, let's see if Joe can, uh, can help out here. AT&T, Joe Sider, please. Hello? Hello, Joe. Yes? Regis Philbert from A Wants to Be a Millionaire. Hey, Regis. Remember me? Pardon? Nothing. <laughs> yes, I do remember you. Uh, it's, it's not worth it, Joe. But anyway, I'm here with Jim, and he needs your help. He needs my help. Yeah. Okay. All right, so in a minute, you're going to hear his uh, question and two possible answers. One of them, of course, the right answer, okay? Okay. All right, Jim, you have 30 seconds, and they start now. Which of the following movies did not use the state of Texas as its primary setting? The Sting or Reality Bites? 
sting or reality bites? Was the sting in Texas, Joe? You should know that one, right? I should. Was the sting in Texas? I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Boy, Jim, I don't know. I don't know. You know, I forgot to tell you. That's why Joe didn't get up here. <laughs> Can you believe we have used three lifelines on this question? I can't believe it. <laughs> now, the last thing you got to do is take a guess or take a pick between Sting and Reality Bites, and, and maybe you'll hit it. Or walk away with 4,000. Thinking of now the director of Reality Bites. Okay. Uh, if I'm right about that, I think I am. Okay, so I'll go with the sting, A. Eh? Quickly, I ask. Final answer? Final answer. Did you say the sting? The sting. You're right for eight. <laughs> It's over for tonight. Well, that sound means that we are out of time for tonight, but Jim will be back here tomorrow night, and joining him will be a brand-new group of contestants from all over the country, and they are Robert Mason, Rich Title, Bill Berry, Sue Clifton, Richard Klimkowitz, Hank Finger.